Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, I got to tell you, you learn something new every day. And today we're going to educate you on some things that candidly, when I was kicking around ideas yesterday, never thought in a million years we we're going to be talking about this. We're going to educate you on fake or staged robberies. We're going to educate you on U visas. We're going to connect the two. And then we're going to explain to you why this needs more attention as it relates to your inalienable right of self-preservation and defense of others. So today, let's spend a few minutes and let's talk about fake robberies to fool immigration and how it could ruin you. Okay, hey, before we get going too far down the road, we're going down. Proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by the Mantis X10 Elite Training System. Listen, we preach all the time here about lawful and responsible gun ownership. What does that mean? It means you need to be confident. You need to be proficient in the use of your firearm. It means that your groups should look a little like this. Unfortunately, if you're honest with yourself, you know your groups are looking a little bit more like that. But do you really have the time and money necessary needed to train at the range all the time? Well, that's why you you can train confidently at home, save thousands on ammunition, and avoid range douches like this guy right here. And did you know that 94% of all shooters improve within just 20 minutes on the Manus X-10 Elite? Listen, the Manus X-10 Elite is used by the United States Marine Corps, the United States Army, and Special Forces. And here's the cool thing, the Manus X-10 Elite, well, it works with just about every platform of firearms. So whether you're firing a pistol, a rifle, a shotgun, or even archery, Manus X-10 will make you better. And here's the best part, all you need is the Mantis training aid and a smartphone with the app already installed on it. And the app's the best part because you're gonna get free updates for life. There's no subscription. It will store all your data. It will even allow you to build groups so that you can share data with your friends to see who's doing better and who needs to keep working. And come to think of it, it would make a great Father's Day gift, wouldn't it? Because after all, dad's got enough ties already, doesn't he? So listen, if you're ready to take your training to the next level or you just wanna do something really cool for dad this Father's Day, click on that link right there. Or for more information, visit my good friends at mantisx.com. Com. Okay, Dateline, May 17th, Chicago, Illinois. Six individuals now are under federal indictment for a conspiracy to commit immigration fraud. Oh my God, what did they do? Well, here's what they did. They would run around and fake robbery. So I want you to understand that the robber and the victims would all be in on it, okay? And the idea behind this is that if you become the victim of a violent crime, if you are here under one type of visa or perhaps here unlawfully, you may have a path to legal residency in the United States. What am I talking about? I'm talking about U visas. What is a U visa? Well, yesterday I had no clue what a U visa was and then these stories broke and I started looking into it and I found out that U visas are, the U non-immigrant status, U visa, is set aside for victims of certain crimes who have suffered mental or physical abuse and are helpful to law enforcement or government officials in the investigation or prosecution of criminal activity. Which really, when you think about it, means that they've been the victim of a crime and we need them to stay in this country because we're gonna need them to be witnesses at the trial for that. Now, it appears that this was a complete criminal enterprise with this group of individuals charging other individuals thousands and thousands of dollars to fake robberies. Now, because you want to make sure that you are truly classified as a victim of a crime, they might do this multiple times to make sure that multiple security cameras captured it. And the would-be fake robbers would actually carry items which resembled weapons. And on occasion, they would actually strike the fake victims just to make sure that the robbery looked very authentic. Now, once the local law enforcement agency signs a certificate saying that you've been the victim of a violent crime and you file that with Immigration Naturalization Services, voila, you have your U visa. And even though it's a non-immigrant visa, remember, it still allows you to now stay legally in the United States. So you sit there and you go, well, great. How could that possibly affect me? Well, Dateline, April 6th, Houston, Texas. 22-year-old Rashad Scott was staging a robbery of would-be victim William Winfrey when a bystander at the gas station, Jesus Vargas, did this. Now, we're not going to break down the actual shoot here um, because, candidly, if we were going to break it down, 
honestly, it looked as though the commission of the crime was complete at that point. The robber was fleeing and shots were taken while he was in flight. However, this is the state of Texas, so don't worry. Somebody has been charged with the crime, but it's not Mr. Vargas. No, 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 no. Instead, it's Mr. Winfrey, the person who was playing the victim. Now, how can that be? Well, there's a very little known thing in criminal law called the felony murder rule. And what the felony murder rule says is that if multiple people are gonna engage as conspirators in a felony, and it is a violent felony, one in which it is not unreasonable to think of that a person may be seriously injured or killed, and that ultimately turns out what happens, everybody who conspired to commit that crime would be on the hook then for the homicide. A more common example is guy A and guy B decide they're gonna go rob the liquor store. Now, guy A tells guy B, I don't have a weapon, we're just gonna go in there and strong arm them, grab the cash and get out of there. And that's what guy B thinks the plan is. However, once they go in there, guy A pulls out a gun, bang, 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 and away we go. Guy B could actually, in some jurisdictions, be charged with felony murder. So how does this apply to you then? Well, put yourself in Mr. Vargas's shoes, okay? Let's say that you're at some place in public and you see what appears to you to be a very serious, violent crime being inflicted upon another person. Now let's go through our rules of self-defense. Remember, when it comes to using force to defend yourself or others, the force you use has to be one, necessary, two, it has to be reasonable, both objectively and subjectively, and three, it has to be proportional. And then the four times where people are oftentimes allowed to use lethal force is number one, you are in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. Two, someone else in your presence is in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. And that's the one that we're gonna have the hook here with. Three, a felony is being committed upon your person. And I think it's important to point out that that is really another way of saying that there is serious bodily injury being inflicted upon your person. And so if you see that felony being committed upon another person's person, safe to say that they are in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. And then of course the last one, a felony is being committed inside your home has no applicability to this. So the scenario here for Mr. Vargas is, is that he believes that there is a person at the gas pumps there that is being the victim of a very serious crime. He believes he sees a weapon. He believes he sees violence because that is what it is intended to look like. Mr. Vargas decides to get himself involved. And again, this is where we kind of have to stop with what we can talk to you about. We can talk to you about what you have the right to do, but when it comes to doing the right things, that's again where I want you to work with your firearms instructors and other tactical trainers to discuss all of those elements. But if a person reasonably believed that another person was in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury by having a violent felony inflicted upon their person, in most jurisdictions, they would be well within their lawful right to deploy lethal force, as exactly happened here in Houston, Texas, and got Mr. Scott killed. So yes, we do have a broken immigration system in this country. One of the main reasons is we just, for whatever reason, refuse to actually enforce our immigration laws. But the problem now has become so prevalent. The problem has become so widespread. The, the problem is like a runaway forest fire at this point that we are beginning to see the implications of this failed policy affect Americans in every single way. Take a look at Mr. Vargas, just there minding his own business and suddenly he now finds himself in the middle of a would-be fake robbery. Now, this is the other thing to point out. Had this taken place in, oh, let's say Long Beach, California or somewhere in Sacramento, California or somewhere in New Jersey or somewhere outside of Chicago, Illinois, would Mr. Vargas have been treated with the same deference that the authorities in Houston, Texas treated him with this exact same set of facts? So the bottom line is this, is I know that we all wanna protect the sanctity of our community and it would be very, very difficult to see somebody being victimized by a violent crime and turn the other cheek. But I want you to be very cognizant that when you decide to inject yourself into somebody else's conflict, that conflict 
could become your problem as well. Listen, we're gonna go ahead and link up everything that we relied upon in making this video down below so that you guys can geek out about it. If you got ideas for videos that we should be doing here at Washington Gun Law, go ahead and click on that link right there. Some of the best videos we ever did weren't really our ideas to begin with. If you got any questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that information is down below in the description box. And then finally, let's say everyone remember, that part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner like we talk about all the time here is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.